Hey guys, we're back. I am tired. Anyone else tired? Mermaid really took it out of me this year. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm really happy with the Argyle Finch illustrations and the four new legendary Pokemon I designed, but it was a lot of work. Who knew drawing a new mermaid every day would be so exhausting? Anyway, I thought I'd take a little downtime from the channel after that, but to be honest, I had a hard time just sitting there doing nothing. I kept thinking about the Maza region, things I wanted to add, things I wanted to change, and I just... I just kept going. Today's video is going to be mostly revisions, actually. I'm going to be going back through a handful of older Pokemon designs that I've done, some are almost a year old at this point, and touch them up a bit. But, as you might have guessed, there's also going to be one new Pokemon design as well. As always, these designs are subject to change. As you'll see in this video, I've learned a lot about designing these kinds of characters in the past year, and I think that'll show in my redos. I also need to reformat a lot of the old Pokedex entries. As of the introduction of the Four Sirens, I came up with a more interesting and in my opinion well-designed Pokedex format. You guys are also going to notice something else new, some awesome animated backgrounds done by our very own subjectively intern Cole. Although, I guess we can't call him an intern anymore. We'll say he's been promoted to subjectively subcontractor. So that's it. Let's get into the video. We're going to start with the revisions from my unique type combination video. I was really happy with Rotatona, but Chispika and Ariamano, they needed work. Chispika was supposed to be the Pikachu clone of the Maza region. Every region since Gen 3 has had one, but it just didn't look like that at all. My concept was a luchador bat, so I wanted it to look somewhat bulky, but the proportions in my first design made it look like uh, Jimbo from Boss Baby. Here's what I liked about my first design and what I wanted to keep. The pattern on the chest that made it look like it was wearing a leotard. The glowing wings under the arms. The color palette and the pose. The biggest thing that needed changing was the proportions. All of the Pikachu clones have their own unique shape and silhouette, but they're also all consistent in that they are small, cute, and round. Making the head bigger than the body was a key part of getting that look. It's hard for me, I don't usually draw characters like this. I'm not used to designs that are so round and adorable, but I'm so much more happy with this than I was with the original. To me, it's night and day. It reads more like a Pikachu clone, it's cuter, but it still looks tough. This was a worthwhile fix. There was another Pokemon from the unique type combo video that I didn't feel happy with either, Ariamano. At the time I designed it, I had recently learned about a type of arachnid called the Twig Spider. They really look alien. No pun intended. But anyway, I figured that they'd make for a great bug and dragon type. In my original design, I think I was too committed to the actual anatomy of the real life spiders, and I didn't push it enough into the realm of Pokemon. Here's what I did like about it though. The colors. The concept of the body looking like a hand and arm, the little face under the false head, and the long reptilian tail. What needed to change was, again, the proportions. The tail took up about 50-60% to 60 of this design, but there was just so little going on within that space. I struggled to come up with some way to make it more interesting, but instead I simply realized I can just make the tail take up less space without making it seem shorter. I also wanted the tail to feel more reptilian, to emphasize the dragon part of Ariamano's typing. The top part of it stayed more or less the same, but I swapped some colors and reposed it a bit to make it look more like a big claw. I think this new makeover helps push my concept a lot more. The last three Pokemon I touched up were the Route 1 bug types from over 10 months ago. I was super happy with this line. I know a few people complained that they didn't look related enough, but that was literally the point. I talk about that concept more in the video, go check it out if you haven't already. I didn't really want to change much about this line, just redraw them with the knowledge that I have as an illustrator now. There were a few things that bugged me yes, about this line. Minimello was drawn on a different size canvas than the rest of my design, so its line work was way thinner and it looked kind of out of place. I also changed the way its body looked a bit too, but nothing too drastic. Chikata I loved, didn't really want to change much. I did make the leaf look a little bit more three-dimensional and clarified that the markings on the bottom were filled with the same nectar inside Manimelo or Noctavispa. I also made its colors match Noctavispa, hopefully this helps people feel like they're more related.
With Noctovispa, I really just wanted to change the pose. The way I had it before made the lower half of its body hard to understand, and more importantly, it kind of looked like it was doing a Nazi salute. And again, I just wanted to modernize the rendering style with the skills that I've learned over the course of the 10 months since I first created this design. And yes, they all got updated Pokedex entries. You can see all of these on the Subjectively DeviantArt. They are even available to download as PNGs. Go nuts. Those were the changes that I made to the older designs. Expect more videos like this in the future. I'm probably going to be revising a lot of my Pokemon as I go. And if you have any thoughts or critiques about those designs, let me know down in the comments. Now, I want to share with you guys an entirely new Pokemon design. The concept behind this was actually suggested to me by a fan, a couple of fans, I think, when I said I needed an idea for a new Ice-type Pokemon in the Maza region. They suggested the Wood Frog, a fairly unassuming amphibian with a special little trick for surviving the winter. Thanks to special sugars in their blood, these frogs can completely freeze over, slowing down their heart rate to the point where they appear to be dead. But in the springtime, they thaw out, and they're perfectly fine. So, okay, obviously that's a great starting point. Pretty much a Pokemon already. But I wanted to give this concept a few more layers so that it wasn't just a cartoon frog. I started thinking about the common name of the animal, wood frog. Okay, you know, maybe I'm the only person who would make this association, but wood frog makes me think of those little hollow wooden instruments shaped like frogs. You, you know, these things. Oh, okay, apparently they're called guiro. Just found that out. These little guys would be the inspiration for the look of my frozen frog, but as I drew it, I realized it needed something more. Something new, something I haven't done yet in the Maza region. Two forms for one Pokemon. Halfway through designing it, I committed to the two-form concept. The frozen form, looking like a guiro left out in the cold, would be part one. Part two was the thawed form. My main goal with this design was to incorporate the shape of the drumstick, I don't really know what you would call it, in its mouth in an interesting and cohesive way. I didn't know at first what that would mean, and I sort of felt it out as I went. Then it hit me. The key was the typing. Thinking about the chemical makeup of the wood frog's blood put a poison typing in my mind, and from that, the idea to make the stick into a bizarre, two-headed mushroom was born. It was tempting to lean more into the shapes mimicking that of a dumbbell and make the Pokemon a fighting type in its thaw form, but poison was just more fitting, and we needed some more of it in the Maza region. The colors were originally more Yoshi-ish, but I changed that to the shiny as a little unintentional Easter egg. Wow, I am just full of puns today. Unintentional, they're all unintentional. Yoshi and his power-up mushroom, that's the shiny form. Crocrozen, the wood frog Pokemon, frozen form. When the temperature drops below zero, Crocrozen will completely freeze over. Special chemicals in its blood keep the ice from harming it, but it will become immobile and inactive until the temperatures rise again. In this frozen form, Crocrozen is so stiff that it makes a pleasant noise when gently struck. Instruments have been made in an attempt to replicate this sound. Crocrozen, thawed form. Though it prefers the warmth, Crocrozen have adapted to live in some of the coldest parts of the Maza region. In the spring and summer, it spends most of its days collecting a rare species of two-headed mushroom. The fungus is incredibly poisonous, but Crocrozen is able to eat it safely. The poison inside the mushroom imbue Crocrozen's blood with a special anti-freezing agent, allowing it to survive the cold winter. So, this was a lot of content. Some new, some kinda new. Hope you guys liked it. What did you think of the reworks? Any of my other Pokémon that you think need touching up? And what did you think of Crocrozen? I'm super happy with it, I think it's adorable. The stats and ability, well, you guys know I'm not good at balancing that stuff, so give me your feedback on that as well. That's all for today, everyone. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, happy Pride Month, and we'll see you all in the next video.